In this video, we continue looking at electrophilic aromatic substitution or EAS reactions. Here we are going to focus on halogenation reactions where we'll start with benzene, we'll react with bromine or chlorine with an iron catalyst in order to yield a product where we have replaced one of the hydrogen atoms of the aromatic ring with a halogen atom. So just as a reminder, while we're going through this, as an alternative to using Br2 and iron tribromide. You could also accomplish chlorination by using chlorine and iron trichloride here. Also as an alternative permutation of this reaction, rather than using iron tribromide or iron trichloride, you could also alternatively just throw iron into the reaction mixture. And in fact, in the old days, scientists would literally report in their results that they used carpet tacks, which were apparently made of iron. So we'd throw those into the reaction mixture with chlorine or bromine and allow the generation of the iron trichloride or iron tribromide in the reaction mixture itself. So be aware that when you are looking for reactants that will allow this halogenation reaction to take place, you're looking for chlorine or bromine in combination with iron or iron trichloride or iron tribromide there. So let's take a look at the mechanism for how in the world this reaction takes place and why do we need iron in the reaction mixture is what acted to form. So I will remind you as we get started with this particular mechanism that in general our electrophilic aromatic substitution mechanisms begin by creating a stronger electrophile through some reaction with a catalyst. Then that strong electrophile, which is strongly positively polarized or ideally positively charged to make it quite reactive, is going to be attacked by the pi bond from the aromatic ring in order to yield a new bond between the aromatic ring and the electrophile and create as the product a so-called arenium, which is a ring that was derived from an aromatic compound and has a positive formal charge. And then finally, in order to restore aromaticity and lower the energy of the system, that high energy arenium is going to lose a proton in order for the aromaticity to be restored to the system. So let's take a look at this for the specific instance of halogenation with chlorine or bromine being the two main halogens that are suitable for this type of reaction. Iodine and fluorine generally are not going to be suitable for um, effective reactions like this. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll start with as our first step of the reaction or our first part of the reaction is making a stronger electrophile. So I'm just going to go ahead and label this as make strong electrophile and we'll go ahead and fill this in with what we need to do specifically here. And I will do this for the reaction I'm writing up here in the upper right hand corner where we're going to take our benzene and we'll do the example here of reacting with bromine Br2 and iron tribromide FeBr3. We use the same halogen in this catalyst that we do as our Br2 halogen reactant there. And the organic product of this reaction, the product that we care about here, is going to correspond to having a bromine in place of a hydrogen atom from that aromatic ring. So the first step of making a stronger electrophile goes like this. We have, as I've mentioned the word catalyst in there implying that the iron tribromide is going to facilitate this reaction and the way that it does that I'm drawing out our iron tribromide right here got tons of lone pair electrons on those bromines if we're going to show them so it is like so and it is no typo that our iron here is kind of an oddball element where with three covalent bonds, that iron will have no formal charge. And drawing in my Br2 as its Lewis structure, Br2. What's going to happen here is that the iron is positively polarized and willing to accept a pair of electrons from bromine. And so we take a pair of electrons from either of the two bromine atoms of Br2, they come over and attack the iron from our iron tribromide. So that's creating a new covalent bond there. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out the product of this step. So you have Fe, B2, 
BR3 was what we originally had. Drawing in all my lone pair electrons there. And then I'll show the new covalent bond that we just created in orange here for emphasis. And that is connected to bromine, which will have two sets of lone pair electrons. We use that third set to form the covalent bond in orange. And then we still have our bromine bromine bond over here. So I draw another bromine out here and it will have three sets of lone pair electrons on it. So now for the fun of calculating formal charges, if we do the formal charge calculation for our bromine atom that's right here, we're going to find that that will come up with a plus one formal charge because it has two covalent bonds and two complete sets of lone pair electrons. And then the iron here is actually going to end up with a negative positive charge, negative formal charge. The way to uh, deduce that that will be the case is we notice that on the reactant side, there is a net charge of zero. None of these reactants that we start with have any atoms with formal charges. So therefore, when you come over to the other side, the net formal charge of the system over here has to be zero as well. And so the bromine has a plus one formal charge. That means the iron is going to have to pick up a negative one formal charge. And that's because of the fact that it made that new bond over to the bromine. So now what has happened here as a result of this is that our bromine out here at the far left is stuck at the very end edge of the molecule and it will be positively polarized because of the fact that the bromine adjacent to it has that positive formal charge. And so that positive formal charge on the bromine that I'm circling is going to make this bromine very, very electron withdrawing because the electronegative bromine really doesn't want to have a positive formal charge. And so it's going to be pulling electron density from over here very, very forcefully, creating a strong positive polarization on that bromine that is out here at the edge of the molecule. And so what's going to happen in the next step of the mechanism is that in order to create and restore st some stability to this intermediate that we've created, the nucleophilic electrons from our aromatic ring are gonna come in and attack this positively polarized bromine atom out here at the end. It is the most accessible of the electrophilic atoms. And we can't really have our electrons come over and attack this positively charged bromine because if we did that, we would end up having to go over the octet for some of the atoms, or we'd be creating a bunch of unstable reaction products as a result of the bonds that we would have to make and break. And so therefore, the more appealing site for the reaction to take place at is at this bromine that's out at the far left, even though it's not positively charged like the one on the right. So it's not the absolute most electrophilic atom in the system, it is nonetheless the most suitable for reaction because reacting at this position will allow us to create products that are relatively stable, whereas reacting at this position would result in needing to create a lot of intermediates and products that were um, highly unfavorable because of violating the octet and other various things of that sort. So now what we'll do to illustrate this in step two of the reaction mechanism of the pi bond from the aromatic ring is going to come in and attack the electrophile to yield the arenium. So let's go ahead and draw out our aromatic ring. And we can take any of the pi bonds from that aromatic ring, since we're working with benzene right now and it's symmetrical, it doesn't matter which set we take. And they're gonna come over and attack the electrophilic bromine atom from FeBr5. So I'm redrawing that iron pentabromide. And I'm going to remind us here that this bromine out at the far left is very positively polarized because it's attached to the very electron withdrawing bromine cation right here. And so what will happen is that one of these pi bonds from our aromatic ring come over and attack that bromine, forcing the bromine-bromine bond to break like so, and the electrons to go on to the bromine. So that's going to allow that bromine that was in the middle there now to be a bromine that is no longer a cation, but instead has the three sets of lone pair electrons that it prefers. It's gonna still be bonded to the iron and we'll be bonded via that iron to three additional bromine atoms as well still. So I'll put those three additional bromine atoms in here. 
that means the iron's still going to have a negative formal charge because we still have the same number of covalent bonds that we did to start with. And then we will make our arenium. So making my ring with my two sets of pi bonds here. Hydrogen, hydrogen, one of those two carbon atoms that I just drew needs to be attached to the bromine. It doesn't matter which of those two since the molecule is symmetrical. And then remember that since this is an arenium and we have a carbon here that only has three bonds, it needs to have that positive charge in our arenium ion there. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so that we can take a closer look at the last step of the mechanism where according to our template that we have up in the top left for all of these EAS reactions that we're looking at, what we're going to do in part three here is that the arenium is going to lose that beta proton to restore aromaticity. And so let's go ahead and redraw that arenium. Drawing my arenium. And by the way, one of the reasons why this arenium is able to form is that it is stabilized by some resonance. So while it's not aromatic, so it's not ideally stable, it does have some resonance capacity from these pi electrons here and here, thereby allowing some stability to be present in the system. So we're gonna take that arenium. We're going to be reacting it with a base in order to restore the aromaticity. And we define this, whatever it's reacting with as a base, because the base is gonna grab a proton from that beta position, forcing the carbon hydrogen bond to break and the electrons to come down to remake a pi bond. So we described at the beginning that FeBr3, up here in our reactants, was acting as a catalyst. By definition, a catalyst can't change in concentration during the reaction. So what that means is that if we use up the catalyst or change it at the beginning of a reaction, like we did here in the first step, where we took FeBr3 and converted it to FeBr5, Later on, at some point in the reaction, we have to restore that molecule to release FeBr3. And so in this last step of the mechanism, considering the definition of FeBr3 acting as a catalyst, what we need to do is use as our base here, FeBr4, and illustrate how we can restore that FeBr4 to FeBr3 to illustrate to us that this is in fact filling the role of a catalyst. Because by definition, since FeBr3 is a catalyst, we have to show how we are going to recreate that at the end of the reaction mechanism. And so what happens here is that in this last step of the reaction mechanism, what we are going to use as our base is we'll take the electrons from this iron bromine bond, which is relatively weak. We'll break that bond and those electrons will come over, grab a proton from the acid and that bond will come down like so to restore the aromaticity. So that is how we'll write out this last step and the last step will enable the regeneration of FeBr3 illustrating to us that the iron tribromide is indeed meeting that definition of being a catalyst and we could observe this in the reaction flask because what we would note is if we measured the concentration of iron at the beginning of the reaction, let the reaction run for a few hours, and then remeasured the concentration of iron tribromide, we would see that the concentration had not changed overall. It's just that during these steps of the mechanism, the iron tribromide is being converted into iron pentabromide, then to iron um, four bromine atoms, and then finally we lose that bromine by using that as a base to grab a proton from the acid. And so the other final product, this would be HB. And I certainly have to remember to install my bromine atom here on the aromatic ring in our lower right hand corner of the screen as I'm drawing that out as our product. So we've illustrated through the loss of a proton from the arenium that we generate our final restored aromaticity product now with a bromine in place of one of the hydrogens on the aromatic ring. And we have also recreated our catalyst, our FeBr3, so that that can then be used for additional cycles of the reaction. The other product of this is HBr, which we would ultimately need to neutralize as we purified the product of this reaction. 
So now anytime you see a combination of bromine with iron or iron tribromide, you should recognize that what's going to be expected to happen in the reaction is that a hydrogen from the aromatic ring will be replaced with a bromine atom. Similarly, we could do an analogous reaction with chlorine and chlorine tri and iron trichloride or with just iron plus chlorine as well. And just like the other reactions that we've looked at so far, this reaction follows this general paradigm for EAS where we form a stronger electrophile first. We then take our pi bond and attack that stronger electrophile here was that bromine out at the end because that attack there was able to create these products which are relatively stable better than the other alternatives. And then finally the arenium loses a proton from that beta position in order to restore aromaticity and also recreate that iron tribromide to act as a catalyst.